Hello and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. So today's topic is Mindset, and the title is What Do You See? So, uh, a few years ago, before my parents lived in South Carolina, they came down for a visit, and on this particular visit, they had their dog with them. Uh, the dog's name was Chili. It was actually a little wiener dog, like a miniature wiener dog. And uh, Chili was a freaking awesome dog, like best dog ever. I know everybody's, uh, every owner thinks that, and I'm glad they do. So, um, but Chili was actually, my parents got him whenever I moved away to college. So Chili basically replaced me. <laughs> so I was replaced by a dog. But uh, he was a pretty cool dog, so I can understand. Pretty fair, pretty fair uh, replacement. Pretty fair trade there. So, um, but since he was family, Chili would often come down on the visits as well. So my parents would take like the eight hour drive from Pennsylvania, which is where I was born, uh, down to South Carolina and they would bring Chili with them. So this one particular visit, I remember we decided to go visit another gym. And it was um, a gym up in Charlotte that helped me kind of get my start with an uh, equipment that helped me kind of start my gym. And uh, the owner's super awesome lady, and she has two big dogs that uh, roam around her gym at the time. Um, and uh, I think since they've passed away, which is a bummer. But, um, but at the time, she had the two big dogs that run around the gym. And we figured we would take Chili up into Charlotte, and he could run around the gym as I showed my parents some of the cool equipment that uh, that gym had gotten. Well, unfortunately, along the way up to Charlotte, uh, I was driving in their there happened to be like a random car parked in the middle of the road. So I don't even know what the hell kind of part of a car it was because I'm not really mechanical. But it looked like a damn engine. It was just a huge ass big thing of metal. Then I was like, I didn't really see it coming. The car in front of me kind of swerved out of the way. And then I had like for like 0.1 second thought of swerving, but I didn't have time to check my blind spots. So I didn't know what to do, so I just ran the damn thing straight over, which was a horrible idea, according to my dad. Uh, but it didn't go well. So um, uh, our car started making noises, and we had to end up pull off to the side of the road. So it was leaking some fluids, so we had to call a tow truck. Now, in the meantime, here we are, uh, my mom, my dad, and I, and Chili, uh, sitting in the middle of nowhere in downtown kind of area of Charlotte. It wasn't like a good downtown. It was like the bad part about downtown. And we were just kind of sitting there in the hot sun, just kind of miserable waiting for the tow truck. And um, it was uh, a fun little, it was, we had a good time because we were just sitting about laughing about how just ridiculous the day was. And like that moment, and then my dad was teasing me about like, you know, going around the car park. And I said, what would you rather do, hit a car park or hit a car? So we were kind of laughing about that. And um, (laughs) and I remember real quick, this is not in my notes or anything, but uh, we went on a motorcycle trip one time. And... Uh, long story short, uh, we were driving and I actually uh, fell over on my motorcycle. My brother went to turn down a hill and I didn't know he was turning, so I had to cut my turn short. And when I slowed down, I went to put my foot down to catch my balance. And since we were on a hill, it was kind of the crest of the hill. So when I went to put my foot down, there was nowhere to, for my foot to go. I just kept tilting, 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 and then I fell over. And I remember my dad said, you got to watch where you're going. And I said, well, I might as well look uh, backward. Hopefully I can go back in time and not wreck. And I said I like it more aggressively, but I remember that was a really funny memory. So you got to look where you're going. I was like, I should have looked back in time. But um, uh, that ended up not being as funny as it was in my head, so I apologize. <laughs> Probably going to stay to these scripts. So anyhow, the tow truck came and uh, picked us up, and we ended up sitting in the tow truck. Uh, my dad was in the passenger seat. My mom was sitting on his lap, and then the dog was sitting on her lap, and then I was sitting on the hump. <laughs> so there was no back seat so I was sitting like you know kind of hip to shoulder of the driver because I was so uh, like raised above him because I was literally on some kind of like hump thing and then my, my dad had my mom on his lap and the dog was on her lap and during that whole ordeal we were just dying laughing because people were driving past us and there's a tow truck with a car you know pulling but you don't imagine that you're going to pass the driver's seat and see a guy's face, a lady's face, and then a dog's face. <laughs> so just all like stacked on top of each other, like those rushing nesting dolls. <laughs> so, but um, it was just hilarious. So we had a really good time. And um, I remember one of our favorite memories of that day was as we were going down the road, 
my dad was kind of wiggling a little bit and kind of getting fidgety. And he said, damn, this dog is getting heavy. And we were laughing because Chili was like a miniature Dotson, so he probably weighed like 10 pounds. So it probably wasn't the dog that he was talking about being heavy. <laughs> so, but he would have been in the dog house if he would have said something else. So um, it was just a really fun day. And what I love about that memory was that day could have been viewed from a million angles. So the focus could have been on the time that was wasted. Okay, so there we were standing 40 minutes waiting for a tow truck. We had driven 30 minutes up to Charlotte. Now by the time the tow truck, like the speed they would drive, it would probably be another hour till we got back to, you know, like the garage where they could work on the car. So it was just a whole bunch of time wasted. And that could have been our focus. Or we could have focused on like the heat and the misery of the day. It was like a 90 some degree day. And it was just hot and miserable and we were all kind of just like sweating our butt off and there was no shade where we had to end up parking the car uh, to wait for the tow truck. So it was just hot as hell. Or we could have focused on the lost money. So uh, the money of the tow truck, the money of getting the car fixed, just money, 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 money. There was a lot of money spent that day, uh, not on necessarily fun ways to spend it. And we could have focused on the missed opportunity. We didn't get to go see the gym. We didn't get to go see the new equipment. I didn't get to show my parents you know, really anything I had to apologize to the lady because we weren't able to meet her, even though she was kind of taking the time to meet us. So that could have been the focal points. We could have been thinking of all those negative things, but instead we chose to see the fun in the moment. We chose to make it a good memory. And still to this day, we all still laugh when we think of that. And um, it kind of just made me think about it was, in all things in life, our perspective is always within our control, even if nothing else is. So we couldn't control, once the car was damaged, we couldn't control whether we had to pull off or not. It was decided for us. You know, we couldn't control whether we had to spend money on a tow truck or not. That was kind of decided for us. We couldn't control how much time it was going to take for us to get the car back down to Rock Hill, South Carolina, and get the car worked on. Like, none of that stuff was within our control. So we couldn't choose anything about those things. But we still could choose our perspective. So, when you look at moments in life, you get the choice of what you want to see. So what do you see? When you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see? The old me, when I was younger, I saw a fat, weak, cross-eyed, high-pitched voice, wasn't coordinated, kind of goofball kid that I didn't really like. And um, there wasn't really a lot of positive things about myself at that time. This would have been about like when I was 14, 15 years old. And I remember just kind of thinking to myself and saying, I don't really like who I am. And uh, I've told the story before, but I was uh, play, like play teasing with a friend of mine. And my, it was on my 15th birthday and he made the comment of, well, at least I'm not fat. And, I, and in my mind, I was like, it just kind of struck me that day. And I was like, damn it, anyhow. I don't like that somebody can say something negative about me and have it be true. Like, it's not his fault that he said it. It's my fault that I made it an option to say. So if I wasn't fat, he would have had not been able to say that. So it was my fault. So on that day, my perspective changed. So I started doing 250 push-ups and 250 sit-ups every single night. My goal was to do it every day for a year. So... From my 15th birthday to my 16th birthday, I did miss 10 days, um, so I was kind of bummed about that. <laughs> but um, seven of them were on a Boy Scout trip where I was too embarrassed, embarrassed to exercise in front of my friends. But something changed that day. Okay, and then when I got a weight set on my 16th birthday, that's when things really changed. And I figured to myself was I couldn't change my eye, so I'm blind in my left eye, and especially when I'm tired, my eyes will start to cross, and it's... You can see it when people are talking to somebody, they'll have an eye, like, they're not like, oh, crap, which eye do I look at? <laughs> so, um, so you can see that, and I'm okay with it now, and because there's nothing I can do about it. But at a young age, it really messed me up, confidence-wise. And then um, I've had to have surgery on my uh, throat uh, from a birth uh, issue, and that raised the uh, pitch of my voice. So I remember when I went and got my teaching certification for health and phys ed, we had to do a physical, which was... Um, a speech, sight, and hearing test, and I actually, I, I, instead of getting, getting a, a good grade on it, I got what was labeled as PC, which was passed, but with conditions. 
So apparently my voice was bad. I remember a uh, very long story, so I'll shorten it up. But basically I had to read off this card of uh, various statements to this lady. And I remember I read the card to her and she kind of looked puzzled at me. And I'm like, I don't think I'm getting any of the words wrong. So I was like really double checking, making sure like the words were in the right order that I was saying. And then she said, hold on, I have to get my supervisor. And I was like, damn it, like, what the hell? <laughs> so so she went and got her supervisor. Then the supervisor came in. I had to read the same damn card again. It was like tongue twister stuff, like fee fi fo fum, that kind of things. And I remember the instructor, supervisor, didn't even look at me. She just looked at the, uh, the student who was doing the test and said some kind of technical stuff about how um, my airway is and the fact that it makes my voice um, higher. So she just said that all to the lady, and she said, don't worry, he's fine, he can pass. And then she just left the room, and I'm like, well, why is nobody telling me what the hell's going on? So, um, but that was funny. So I've known that for a long time. And what I decided was my change in mindset was I couldn't fix my eye, and I can't fix my voice. But I can become a big, scary mother trucker <laughs> that never needs to talk. <laughs> so that was my goal when I was 16 years old is I'm going to become freaking huge, get all of the muscles, be lean as hell. I'm going to have a body so like ripped up that no one will even look at my eyes. And I'll be so damn scary that I'll never even need to talk to anybody. So that's what I tried to do is what of the things I didn't like about myself could I change? So rather than seeing just all of the bad and seeing myself as a victim or, you know, seeing myself as, you know, like damaged goods. I decided to instead see what could I address? What can I do about this? What can I fix? What is within my control? And now the new me, so as I've gotten through that, so I did start exercising from a mentally dark place, and it took me a long, long, long time to get out of that, and I involved some eating disorders and whatnot. But I'm in a ridiculously healthy place now, very, very happy with everything. So I see myself now as I'm smart enough to figure anything out, so if I need to do something, if I can apply myself to it, if I decide to apply myself to it, I can do it. Um, I'm funny when I'm not too tired to be. <laughs> so sometimes I just don't want to be funny because I'm tired and I just want to go home. So, um, But I can be funny when I want to be. Um, I'm generally a good person. So there are some things I need to work on for sure, but in the big picture, I'm not too shabby. So I have a much more healthy, happy place uh, mentally now. So that had been my kind of quick uh, story is at one point in time I saw all of the flaws and I saw it as me being damaged goods and then I had to change my mind to say you know what some of this stuff does exist actually all of it existed but some of it I can control some of it I can do something about so let me freaking get to it <laughs> so let me bust my butt so I remember like I worked out Probably from the age of 16, probably to 24, I had year-long plus stretches where I worked out every single day. So, I mean, years at a time. And it was because I was, I was determined. I had lived unhappy for way too damn long. And I would rather be unhappy in the misery of trying to change it than to be unhappy and sitting there doing jack shit. So I was going to be in pain either way. Why the hell not be in the pain that actually was going to lead to something? not the pain that was just going to keep me where I was. So that was my journey. So when you look at yourself, what do you see? Is the first thing you see your flaws? What you don't like about yourself? Or is the first thing you see the positives? The good stuff about yourself? What you do like about yourself? So in a past podcast, we've talked about uh, podcast 247, titled Daily Happiness Routine, I talked about a routine that I used to get myself out of a moment of depression. And one of the things I did was at the end of the day, I kind of did a review of the day. And among questions of like, what was happy about the day? Like, what did I laugh? Like, did I laugh about something that day? If so, what was it? Did I help somebody that day? If I did, who did I help and how did I help them? So it was kind of recalling the day of the good things about the day, recalling what I was grateful for, kind of focusing on my blessings of my life. And one of the questions was, one of the things I had to do in my routine, was to say three positive things I liked about myself. And they had to be something new every day. 
So I couldn't just say something dumb and keep repeating it over and over every day. And that was actually the hardest part of the routine was to say positive things about myself because I was in a moment of depression. And when you're in depression, it's hard to see the good. You just feel overwhelmed and defeated by the bad. So that daily happiness routine was something that absolutely, definitely helped me. It helped me not go further in depression, and it helped me actually kind of work my way back out. But what it really did was it helped keep my vision where it belonged. I kept looking at what was good about myself. So that way I could I could find it, I could nurture it, and I could grow it. So I kept seeing the good things rather than getting lost in the bad. So when you look at yourself, do you automatically list the bad things about yourself? Or can you see the good? If you can't see the good, or if the good isn't the first thing you see, start practicing that routine of saying three positive things about yourself every single day. If that seems overwhelming, just say one, one thing every day. But it has to be something new, okay? And you can even check out that whole podcast, 247, about the daily happiness routine. But what do you see when you look at yourself? What you do see is a choice. You're choosing what you see. So if you see flaws, if you see negatives, that is a choice. Choose to change it. Instead, choose to see the good things about yourself. Practice it, okay? Okay. Positivity just doesn't, it's not a light switch you can just turn on. You gotta practice that shit. You gotta put some uh, routines to it, you gotta put some actions to it, and you have to repeat it every single day. You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna have kind of good days, bad days, things are gonna go in spurts. You're gonna have something bad happen in life that reminds you of some negative shit. That's gonna throw you back in the loop, you know, like in a downward spiral, but you can take yourself back out. So you can choose to see the good in yourself. If you choose to do so. And when you look at others. Same thing. What do you choose to see when you look at other people? You could focus on them being loud. Maybe they smell funny. <laughs> maybe they talk about themselves all the time. They're self-absorbed. So maybe they just kind of the gossipy. Maybe they have some character flaws that you don't really like. So you can choose to see those things. Or maybe in that exact same person. You can choose to see. Like, you know what? You know. They are a little brash and bold and kind of annoying, but they're always freaking happy. <laughs> I wish I was as happy as they were. You can see somebody being always eager to help. So, yeah, maybe they talk a lot. Maybe they're annoying as hell. But you know if you ever need anything, they'd be the first person there to help you. And they'd be annoying and helping you. They'd be so damn happy. And, ugh, so, ugh, those kind of people. <laughs> but you can see that. You can choose to see that they're always eager to help. And, often... If you think somebody talks about themselves all the time, when's the last time you talked about yourself? When's the last time you asked them to listen? Maybe they are a better listener if they know that they're supposed to be. They can't read your mind. So if they're always talking about themselves, you can just chime in and say, Hey, you know what? I kind of kind of had a bad day. Um, would you mind talking through something with me? There's something I'm kind of wrestling with on my mind. And you'll... I, 99.9% of the time, the person's going to go, oh, man, yeah, sure, whatever. You know, whatever you need. And they'll listen. They just didn't know they were supposed to. So people can't read your mind. Okay, you got to communicate with them. And that's what you can do with people, is you can choose to see what you want to see in other people. You can see the negatives and focus on them, or you can find the positives. And that actually has turned into a game for me. Um, this is probably incredibly way too revealing. But I have had some people in my life that I could not really, like, there was no positives that kind of, like, jumped out at you. So you're looking at me and you're like, oh, my God, this person just a freaking train wreck. <laughs> and uh, somebody's probably thought about that about me. So, um, but sometimes you'll have those thoughts, or at least I hope to God I'm not the only person that thinks that way. <laughs> so, but I actually turned it into a game and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to find something positive about that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to find it. I'm going to figure it out, whatever it is. And then I'll sit there and analyze the hell out of it and see if I can find something positive. So I actually have turned that into a game. But it was that I was choosing to find the good. And I chose so damn hard to find the good that I had to turn it into a game to do so. So 
But that's a choice. You can choose to see the negatives or you can choose to see the positives. And the same thing is true about our life, about your circumstances, where you find yourself today. What do you choose to see? When it comes to finances, do you choose to see more, more, more? I need this for this. I need this next. I need that next. I always need, 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 want, 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 want. Or do you choose to see, hey, you know what? I have a lot of good things in my life. I have this, I have that, I have a car, I have a house. You know, maybe I have some money I can choose to spend on a hobby. You know, maybe I have money I can choose to go out to eat. That's an expense. So maybe you have some money that allows you some comforts in life. And yeah, there could be some things you maybe want on top of that. There could be some, you know, things that if you had extra money you could use it towards. But do you choose to see that as the secondary thing? Or is that the first thing you see? So when you look at your financial situation, is the first thing you see what you're blessed with and grateful for? Or do you choose to just see the wants? That's it. So you get to choose. Same thing with your job. Maybe you don't like your job. Okay? But maybe your job has leeway of schedule. So you can get time off to go to family events. That's a perk. So maybe your boss is an a-hole, but you can take a Friday off to go... You know, on a family trip, it's kind of a, you know, if you're stuck with the boss being an a-hole, at least you got the, the freedom of schedule. Or if you don't have freedom of schedule, at least you got a paycheck coming in. But there are positive things to see when you choose to look for them. Maybe with marriage or a relationship. Maybe you want the other person to change all you see is their flaws, and you're like, man, they're not doing this, they're not doing that, they always do this, they always do that. It's always them, 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 they need to change, they need to change. Or, maybe, you could practice what we said about looking for the good in people, and recognize that, yeah, they have a couple things that, if they were changed, that would be nice. But you have to recognize that they might feel the same to you. You are probably not so damn perfect yourself. Okay? And that's me included. <laughs> so when I'm tired, I'm grumpy, and I don't talk much. So, and that can sometimes be like, you know, kind of like a bummer on communication if somebody else is in a positive mood and I just don't want to talk. So that's kind of an unfortunate thing. So they probably wish I was more positive more often. That might be something they could see in myself. So there's a lot of things that other people will choose to look past in us. So it's good for us to do the same for them. Now, if in a relationship you're being disrespected, or if there's something that really does need change for the betterment of the relationship or people around you or the situation you're in, you can voice them, absolutely. I'm not saying, you know, don't. So sometimes things do need changed. People do need to change behaviors, okay? But that's what you want to think of it as. Is don't be disrespectful when you're doing it. Don't judge them. Don't nag them. Be a teammate, not an official, Okay? So an official just throws flags and tells everybody what's wrong. Teammate helps you build that up, helps you correct it. So you can make the person aware of it and then join in the process to help them change it. Not just point it out and stand with your arms crossed waiting for them to do it. Get involved. Get your hands dirty. Get in there. Okay? So it's okay if something does need to change. I'm not saying don't, you know... Um, voice your opinion, voice your concerns, but do it in a loving, positive, like supportive way, not in a judgmental, I'm angry at you, you know, everything's wrong about you kind of way. So in yourself, in others, and in life, what do you choose to see? And if you see something you want changed, when you look at it, do you see obstacles to that change? Or do you see opportunities? So I remember I read a book, a really good book, um, about uh, it's called How to Be an Imperfectionist by Stephen Guys, G-U-I-S-E. Uh, some mentioned him before in past podcasts, but it's a great book. And um, a stage I went through when I was younger was my training meant a lot to me. So if I didn't have exactly the right amount of time or if I didn't have the exact right equipment, I was kind of always pissed off and angry because I wouldn't be able to get the best training possible. And that book helped me realize that, you know what, that's true is there is the best training, but then there's also the fact that you just got the damn training in. 
So just because I couldn't have a perfect workout didn't mean I shouldn't have no workout. So sometimes a 10 minute workout is better than nothing, right? So you might want to have, you know, an hour or two at night to mindlessly watch TV, which is a little bit of a waste of time, but it's your unwinding time. Maybe you don't have an hour or two. Maybe somebody took a bunch of time. Maybe you got rushed. You don't have as much time as you wanted. Maybe, maybe you can turn your phone on silent. You can turn off all the sounds around you and just take 10 minutes to breathe. Okay? Fancy word is meditation, but if you just sit in freaking silence, okay? Turn off the radio. Turn off the TV. Turn off your phone. Just sit. It's amazing what 10 minutes of pure silence can do to help restore the soul, help clear your mind. It's amazing. So, that's what you want to do. When you look at your life, when you see things you want to change, you should look for the opportunities, not the obstacles. And what you experience in life is largely based on what you see. Will you see being packed into a tow truck <laughs> with a dog in tow and sitting on a hump as a happy memory, like we did? Or will you see the time wasted, the money wasted, you know, all the negativity of the moment? Will you enjoy the moments you're in or miss out on that for all the other aspects? It's your choice, okay? It's your choice to see the good in yourself, in others, or in life. It's your choice when you want something to change to accept it the way it is or change it. But if you just sit there, you know, like a bump on a log, wishing things were different, but you're not doing anything to do, like to make it different, you're not working on accepting it, or you're not working on changing it, you're an idiot. You're choosing to make yourself miserable. That is a choice. So, start looking for the, op the opportunities to make the change. Start looking for the good in what's in your life. That will allow you to accept it if you can't change it. But it's your choice, okay? What you see in life is your choice. Choose wisely. Cool. Okay, if you like this podcast, please share it with family and friends. The more people we help, the happier the world will be. Also, if you like the information, you can find more from us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Brutal Iron Gym. And if you have any questions, feedback, or suggestions, we'd love to hear from you. The podcast is for you, so we want to know what you want to learn about. And you can tell us at our email at BrutalIronGym at gmail.com. As always, I hope this was helpful. And thank you for listening. And thank you for watching. <laughs>